Hi guys, your old pal Chuck here from TheCheapBastard.net and I'm here to share a little advice with you. In case nobody's told you, nothing will make you look more like a weenie, a wimp, a sissy, a Nancy boy than the inability to change your own tire. Now this goes for men and women too, this is the 21st century and all. There's nothing more hopeless and helpless looking than somebody pulled over to the side of the road unable to change their own tire. They have, you've seen that look before on the highway. They got the spare out, they're scratching their heads, they're looking around, waiting for somebody with busted knuckles and hairy arms to come save them. It's even worse if you're a man, or even worse if you're a teenager and it's the big prom night date. And uh, trust me, you don't come out looking good if you don't have hand skills. Well, that's what your pal Chuck is here to show you. I got a little hand skills for you today. Everybody thinks they know how to do it because they've seen it done on TV, but the majority of people don't know how to do it. You'd be surprised now. We're gonna show you how to change your tire in under 10 minutes. You're gonna come out looking like a champ, a hero. You're gonna be the savior of the day. I mean, you can't lose. Invest a few minutes here at thecheapbastard.net. We'll show you how to get it done and keep your manhood intact where it should be. Okay, the process isn't all that difficult. It's just a matter of keeping the steps in the right order. So first things first, let's drop the spare tire at the back. If you have a newer car, you probably have a setup similar to this where the tire is mounted underneath the trunk of the car, so let's get into it, all right? First things first, we'll take the uh, tire iron tool, it's sort of a collapsible tool that comes factory from the car, and you'll find a, you might find a reservoir, sort of like this, with a cap on it, you release the cap, drop the tool in, and then start spinning, just like that. We're gonna drop that tire. It might take 50 turns or so, but she'll drop eventually, and you'll feel that tension come off the cable. Okay, this isn't NASCAR, this isn't about speed, we're not running a race, we just want to get back on the road as safely and as reasonably as possible. So let's loosen the lug nuts first, we're not going to take them all the way off, but we are going to pull them off just a bit, okay? And it's a good habit to work in what we call a spider, or there we go, web configuration moving across the bolts. Do this one, do the one across, do this one, do the one across, and that type of pattern. It'll help ease the tension off the, uh, off the nuts. There we go. Let's take them off and off. Okay, moving in just a little closer, you'll see I didn't take the nuts all the way off. Just a matter of a few threads just to loosen them up just a bit so they still stay on because the next step we're going to jack up the actual vehicle okay stay tuned okay our next maneuver now is uh, jacking up the vehicle now if you look in the back of your truck or your car you're probably going to find something that looks like that it's called a scissors jack scissors jack got it all right then pay attention now i am not a big fan of these I find them a little unstable and they're a lot of work what you have to do is you'll be able to have to stick something Use your hook or a bar that comes with the vehicle. You stick it in here and you wind it up. And this is what opens and closes the scissors jacks to elevate it or to lower it. I'm not a big fan of these. I don't like them. Particularly if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere, you don't have a solid, solid grounding, and uh, it's raining out on you, you're gonna be out there forever. Instead, I prefer a bottle jack. They're cheap, they're under $6 at your local hardware store. They do a great job. They're very compact, there's hydraulic fluid in here. I prefer a hydraulic lift over a manual lift any day, it's just me. And they store really compact in your trunk. So basically, you need a bottle jack, say a pair of pliers to open and release the valve when you're finished or when you're starting. And you should have these in your car anyways at all times. It's a generally do-all good tool to have wherever you go, because you're gonna need it at some point, no matter what the fix is. So, bottle jack, pair of vice grip pliers, and a generic uh, 
extended Phillips head screwdriver here, and I'll show you how we're going to do this, all right? All right, guys, I'm under the vehicle now. The first and most important thing at this stage of the game is we want to find a good, solid place on the vehicle to um, prop the vehicle. It has to be sturdy and part of the frame, preferably, so that the vehicle doesn't fall down and crush your little piggies off. I'm choosing this part of the frame right in here. It makes for a perfect perch for the bottle jack. We'll set it up right there. Can you see me? Can you see me? All right, what we're gonna do is, using our Phillips head screwdriver simply as a lever, we're not actually using it as a screwdriver, we just need the length and the lever portion of it all to prop under here. And I hope you can see where I'm going with this. So let me just set that right there, and we'll put our lever to work. You can see the vehicle just lifting just a little inch at a time. We're only gonna get about six inches of lift off this, which is probably more than we actually need. You're gonna get dirty, don't fool yourself. So if you're heading out to the prom or to a family function or that big meeting with the boss, have a pair of overcoveralls in your, in your truck at all time or in your vehicle. It just makes good sense. Okay, now because in many ways this really is a video for first timers, I want to give you options. If you don't want to use a bottle jack, I mean they're pretty cheap, they're easily portable, but if you want to go up a few notches, spend a hundred dollars for a tool that will seriously last you the rest of your life, your kid's life, your grandkid's life. Invest a hundred, hundred plus dollars in a, in a really good uh, floor jack. This is the kind of stuff you see at, the, at NASCAR and in the big automotive shops, okay? It's not more than, say, $100, $125 on sale at your local big box or hardware store. And I'll show you how to use these. It's really quick, really efficient, um, maybe not as portable, but good to have around the yard in case you wake up like me this morning and discover you have a flat tire. All right, I'll take you through that process, too. Okay, the floor jack works as simple as this. It's right here, rolls around, it's got four casters on it. So basically, you, you loosen, or you open or you close the valve with your your uh, extension bar here. Just turn it clockwise or counterclockwise, depending whether you want to release gas or whether you want to seal gas up in there for lifting purposes. It's so simple. We're going to go through the same process. Watch this. Once again, we slide the jack under the frame, find a suitable point, close the valve by turning clockwise, and then we just put the jack, and then we just let the jack do the work. Okay, with the vehicle raised up a few inches in the air, even a toddler could figure out the rest, but I'm going to play it safe and walk you through, okay? So, take the nuts off. Okay, line up your bolt holes with your studs, and it should be fairly quick work from there. A little heavy, so a little back energy wouldn't hurt you. Okay, now once we have it on, don't try and get the lug nuts on at once. Just put one at the bottom, it's gonna wanna kick out, just to lock it down, keep it from flopping around anywhere. Okay, with the, with the spare tire secured now, we're gonna tighten up the lug nuts, and uh, as best as we can, but remember, this tire is still free, uh, free turning here. So we're gonna tighten these up, and before we lower the weight down of the vehicle onto the wheel. So let's go through this real quick. Using our tool. It's going to be pretty easy at first, and then you're going to start to feel the tension. So you have to counterbalance with one hand, okay? Or your body, or move against it. Okay? Again, working in a spider web pattern. Back and check them again. All right. Now that's not the last time we're going to do this. We're going to drop the weight of the vehicle down on the wheel real quickly, and we're going to test these nuts again, okay? All right. Once more for old time's sake. Well, guys, after 10 minutes, I think you got it figured out by now. You thought you knew, but now you do know, and there's a difference between the two, let me tell you right now. 
You come out looking like a champ, smelling like a king. You're the hero, the savior, the kids are applauding, singing your name, chanting daddy, daddy, daddy. Everybody wins. If you couldn't digest this today, then maybe it's time to go back to reading Curious George, because it's so easy, everybody should be able to do it. You're a human being, you gotta have these skills. That's what we do right here. We give you the skills right here at thecheapbastard.net. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.